Eric Holder has announced his resignation as the U.S. Attorney General today. It's a position that he's held for the last six years. So in honor of this big announcement, we bring you the accomplishments of the Holder DOJ. Now, a lot of people have accused Holder of being the most highly politicized attorney general. He came into the game with an agenda. Every day, some kind of anti-violence, anti-gun message. Every day, every school, at every level. One thing that I think is clear with young people and with adults as well is that we just have to be repetitive about this. It's not enough to simply have a, a catchy ad on a Monday and then only do it every Monday. We need to do this every day of the week and just really brainwash people into thinking about guns in a vastly different way. So, of course, it's no surprise that Holder was later tied to the Oklahoma City bombings, an event that prompted several federal legislative gun control provisions, even though there was never a single gun involved. A similar allegation stands out in the Fast and Furious scandal, which was a covert DOJ mission labeled a criminal false flag by Ron Paul. With the full knowledge of the Department of Justice, ATF agents facilitated the sale of thousands of illegal guns to Mexican drug cartels and then dropped all surveillance of those weapons once they crossed the border. Those weapons showed up at multiple crime scenes in Mexico and at the murder scene of U.S. Border Patrol agent Brian Terry. Uh, when were you first told or became knowledgeable about U.S. officials allowing firearms to be sold to the drug cartels in Mexico? I don't know. When was anyone in the White House first informed about the tactics that were used under Operation Fast and Furious? Again, uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Uh, that I don't know. I, I just don't know. I don't know whether or not. Uh, I just. Uh, yeah. I don't. Yeah. I don't know when the subpoena was issued. Well, I don't know precisely. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I don't know the specific questions. Now, again, I don't know what happened. This is the guy caught perjuring himself in the memo CBS released last week show that they said they were going to blame the guns in Mexico on the Second Amendment. Is that not a form of false flag against our most basic of rights, sir? And what would you do, uh, if President, uh, to people like uh, Eric Holder? Well, he should be immediately fired, and then there should be an investigation and find out if charges should be made. And that's obviously over the top. And all these kind of sting operations and false flag, uh, this is this is criminal. Uh, I, I don't know where the charges will be made, but he deserves to have charges uh, you know, up against him. In 2012, the House of Representatives voted to hold Holder in contempt after he refused to turn over documents related to the botched gun-running scandal. And as recently as yesterday, Holder has been accused of purposefully stonewalling all efforts by members of Congress to look into Fast and Furious. Now, Department of Justice senior officials have on many occasions barred or delayed inspector generals from gaining access to documents that were crucial to their investigations, including the AP wiretapping scandal. Now, the Department of Justice illegally seized phone records of reporters and editors of the Associated Press, including their home phones and cell phones, and also those of Fox News reporter James Rosen. Um, with regard to the potential prosecution of the press for the disclosure of material, that is not something that um, I've ever been involved in, heard of, um, or would think would be a wise policy. So did Holder lie under oath again? It was revealed that he personally signed off on the 44-page warrant that gave the department access to Rosen's email account. When it was revealed last year that the IRS purposely targeted conservative groups who were applying for tax breaks, IRS Director Lois Lerner twice pled the fifth. She conveniently suffered a hard drive crash. A Justice Department official in charge of election crimes refused to testify about his role in the IRS scandal. And then, oops, the emails of five other staff members involved in the investigation were also lost. And it has since been revealed that the IRS began destroying evidence as soon as the investigation into the targeting began. House Oversight Committee Chairman Daryl Issa subpoenaed Eric Holder, accusing the Department of Justice once again of stonewalling investigations by failing to produce relevant material. And the lead investigator who's been appointed to look into the IRS's political targeting of Obama's enemies happens to be a partisan Democrat 
who has donated more than $6,000 to President Obama and Democrat causes. Now, Ted Cruz is calling for Holder's impeachment after the attorney general has rejected the call for an independent prosecutor to probe the IRS's targeting of conservative groups. And that's not the only time that the attorney general has refused to enforce the law in order to protect this administration. When rampant fraud and corruption was exposed at Veterans Affairs, Attorney General Eric Holder announced the Department of Justice had no plans to investigate. And Holder protected another key player in the Fast and Furious scandal, the international banks. Banks which Holder has time and again refused to prosecute. If you do prosecute, if you do bring a criminal charge, uh, it will have a negative impact on the national economy, perhaps even the world economy. And I think that is a function of the fact that some of these institutions have become too large. Eric Holder, these are your accomplishments. You've managed to slow walk all of the big scandals affecting this administration, saving the responsibility for a future DOJ appointee to investigate under a future administration. Now, unfortunately, you didn't manage to grab the guns, but you did manage to further degrade trust in the office of the attorney general. And for that, we salute you. Well, either you know or you don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. In the past decade, we have witnessed unparalleled scientific discoveries in the area of health. But no one has put together a formula that focuses directly on brain health, nerve growth factors, and optimizing your cellular energy at the same time. DNA Force is one of the most expensive formulas to produce. Some of the ingredients in DNA Force are $12,000 a kilogram. We are using the coveted, patented, only American source of PQQ, CoQ10, and more. You want the best that's out there at the lowest price anywhere? Well, we're bringing you a total win-win. The ultimate value, cutting-edge, trailblazing game changer that also supports the info war. We have produced a limited run of DNA Force, and it will take up to 12 weeks to produce more once we sell out. Secure your DNA Force today at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. DNA Force from InfoWars Life.